Welcome folks, day 34, Nick here. Yesterday we did um, 293 kilometres and ended up uh, about 43 kilometres south of Andermatt, which is where the overall target was. And um, at a campsite, quite a nice campsite. A restaurant, a swimming pool, toilet block as you'd expect, and the setting is wonderful. There is a waterfall, um, but you can't quite see it from here. So today I've got uh, another slight change of plans. One of the advantages of travelling solo is I can change my plans whenever I want to. I'm going to stay put here for one day. The advantage being it's only 43 kilometres to Andermatt, so I'll go to Andermatt, do the 80 mile, 120 kilometre loop, and um, then head back here, which saves packing up and setting up again and packing again. Um, head back here, and then tomorrow head straight for Stelvio. So it's a bit of a schlep to Stelvio, um, but it'll be worth it, I think. And then from Stelvio, that's when I'll definitely be past moving home. Anyway, uh, the other advantage is that I don't have to pack the bike up. So I'll be just travelling very light for this particular, the three passes. Welcome folks, hope the sound is working. So, <clears throat> off the end of that, looking to do the three passes, Susten, Furka and Grimsel. And um, because I'm staying at the same campsite, which is about 40 odd kilometers away, 45 kilometers away, I've got no luggage. I've just got my tank bag with some bare essentials in, just in case. But, um... <clears throat> nothing else, so... See how the bike feels. Without all the baggage on the back. New looking train. Oh, look at the waters over there. It is lovely. I know I keep saying that. But if you get the chance to do any of the routes I've done, you yeah, know, then, then do. There is a downside to travelling solo, and that's the um, camaraderie that you, you get from sitting at the end of the day or uh, sitting at a coffee stop or whatever and chatting about what you've seen it's I've got nothing against you guys I enjoy chatting to you but it is a little bit one way although there are lots of comments which I really do appreciate and that's great but it's a bit after the event so, <laughs> and that's my fault for, for publishing so late. And is there a difference in the, the bike without all the gear on the back? Yeah, I think there is. It does feel a little bit more responsive. Um, and it's not a huge weight of the stuff in the back. It's not like having a, a passenger. But, um, get over there. Um, just feel it and it's a little bit light around these bends as well so I'm just having to re this yeah it's nice don't feel the weight on the back so if you've ridden with pillion you know a passenger on the back then you'll you'll know the feeling wondrous scenery
The trouble is, of course, I just don't know how much do you capture because I don't know what's coming around the corner. Uh, and sometimes I'll press the record button, but I won't know exactly where I am when I press it. So I can't say anything about it. It's just we're where we are. So at the moment we're still just outside of Faldo. And that looks like a well, funicular, do you think? Running up, it's a big sort of scar through the trees. But the mountains, they don't look real. Even even here, I'm, I'm riding, and that looks like Photoshop to me. Looks like somebody's just, um, and uh, not very well Photoshop, something I'd do. <laughs> just plonked in some, some random mountains they found somewhere and uh, tried to fudge them in, make it look as if it's, uh, if it's a real thing. I don't know what that is. Any clues what that might be? Hmm. Maybe we can see from here. That is a steep slope, isn't it? I think I saw signs as well for what's probably a funicular, so it might well be a um, viewpoint up there as well. There are a lot of police around today. There was a sign there for um, a funicular. I think actually we're in the town of Gotardo. People parked there, presumably for the um, ride up. that then <laughs> I don't know what pass that is but that's not one we came up For those of you who can make it here, do try. For those of you who can't, I can, can't uh, express how fabulous it is, the, the depths and the smell, it's clean air, quite quiet of course, apart from uh, motorcycles and wind noise and the crash on it. There's bird song. But, uh, you know, just the whole smells and sounds, the whole sensory thing is just astounding. Okay, I've plumbed in the um, place we're staying at and it's saying it's 55 kilometres from here. It doesn't mention anything about a ferry being required. And I've told it to use the adventurous routing. Uh, there we go. 
I genuinely thought we'd finished with the uh, the interesting type of riding and then came across started going through these passes lots of hairpins and all the rest of it and the next bit is uh, full of hairpins too I believe anyway so um, it's a little bit more exciting to go but I had to stop because the battery had packed up again so I'm now on the fourth battery uh, which is my final one but we're only 20, oh no, 40, 47 kilometers away from um, the campsite anyway uh, hopefully the next bit will work and we'll enjoy it Get a nice panoramic view of the uh, area we've come from. You watch that, I'll watch the road. extension um, hairpins I'm so lucky to have been able to do this obviously not everybody can but I just hope that some of the glimpses that I've been able to provide of, um, what's in our world you know, in Europe and I think I appreciate it from doing it on a smaller capacity bike. I mean, you can go smaller still, of course. But looking at the various bikes that have, I've seen, the uh, sports bikes, the street nakeds, and all the rest of it, they're rushing through. Yeah, it's a thrill. Absolutely, understand the thrill. But they're probably missing the, uh, the bigger picture. But maybe they've done it plenty of times. They've seen the, the bigger picture. If it's on your doorstep, you don't always. Um, Appreciate it, do you? Anyway. Waffle, waffle, waffle. they call these things but this is definitely one of those um, hairpins which pokes out over the edge you might just be able to see it as we go around look, Ooh, look at that Quite a bit of construction really. Sorry about the sound effects. It just looks like green screen to me, you know, like somebody's <laughs> slapped, slapped something on the, they're sitting in an office somewhere and they've got this green screen behind them, they're projecting this magnificent scenery, but I can assure you I'm not sat in an office and it really is magnificent, even through my fly caked visor which I cleaned at lunchtime but it's uh, completely spotted again
happening. And I've said that about so many places. And I was asked recently, what's your favourite place so far? <laughs> and if I think about it, it's the place I'm in now. Is the <laughs> Maybe that's because I've got a short memory or something, but um, I've seen such wonderful, wonderful scenery. Met some lovely people. This is the campsite we're at. Good sign. So, hundred and uh, hundred and ninety seven kilometers for trip B, but actually it's a little bit further because I forgot to reset the trip. Here we are. 